the core input of water has got to be made available for any rural developmental activity to become successful. In the drought prone areas, usually we have lowering water tables year after year. This illustration shown here would indicate how the water table levels are getting lower down year after year. In this illustration, the water table levels are indicated in successive years. For example, this is x-axis which measures the time dimension and this is the y-axis which indicates the depth to ground level of the water table. This is the ground level and this is the depth from ground level to the water table. For example, in summer month of the first year, let us consider this is the point. That means the water table is about 6 meter below ground level. It is indicated here 6 meter below ground level and the water table rises during the rainy period and it occupies this level at the end of the rainy period and that would be 2 meters below ground level and when the water is utilized what we call draft when the water is pumped out the water table goes down because there is no recharge this is the end of the rainy period and afterwards there is no there is no there are no rains and therefore there is no recharge and when we pump out water the water table level goes down and it occupies a level of again 6 meter below ground level this is one year and in the second year also it repeats in the same manner rises up to this during the end of rainy season and goes down to this level during the end of the summer and in the third year again it repeats like this and it behaves in this manner if it behaves like this every year then there is no problem but in practice what is happening is we have more of pumping of ground water so therefore let us see though it may get recharged like this we pump more water than what is recharged and therefore the water table level goes down to a lower level than the earlier one and this again gets recharged during the rainy period of the second year and it assumes this level that means even after the rainy period it does not touch the earlier level when there is a greater amount of pumping than the recharge. Now again in the second year rainy period there is uh, uh, I mean uh, a post rainy period second year there is a draft and uh, the water table gets lower down to this and this is much lower than earlier summer water level and therefore it is a depletion of water table and the fall of water table is seen in these two points. Similarly, these two points also there is a fall in the water table. And in the third year, when we consider, there is a further depletion of water table level and it assumes a lower level. It continues for some years and there will be deepening of water table levels occurring year after year in the same manner. That means if we have more pumping than the recharge, then the water table levels goes down and it gets further it, it gets uh, lower down further as the years pass by so in effect what we have to ensure is the amount of pumping what we have should match with the amount of recharge for example if you see these curves in this situation the recharge and the draft recharge and the pumping they are matching with each other now here let us see this curve, the recharge is this component, the pumping is this component, therefore there is more pumping than the recharge, so therefore water table level goes down. So we have to ensure that our pumping is not, uh, 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 should not exceed the recharge, in any case it should never exceed the recharge even the subsequent years. If supposing we are pumping more amount of ground water we have to ensure that we recharge that quantity of groundwater. Unless we ensure the recharge of what we pump, otherwise 
depleting water table levels will occur. And this is occurring in all the drought prone areas of our country where recharge measures are not attempted. In the watershed developmental activity, we try to attempt to increase the recharge by various component works and then see that the draft is suitably met with the increased recharge. That means pumping at no time would be more than the recharge. In this diagram, this is the ground level, this is the root zone depth and these are all the crops within the root zone and there are also trees indicated in this manner and the water table level is fluctuating between this level and this level earlier to watershed development. That means during summer this would be the water table level and then during rainy season and post rainy season the water table level will rise up to this. So this was the water table levels during the pre watershed development phase. When once watershed development is carried out this entire water table levels what we see here is brought to this domain. That means the post rainy period water table levels will have to rise to this level and the summer water table levels will have to rise to this level. From this level it has to rise to this level, summer water table levels and post rainy season water levels will have to rise from this level to this level. The water table in the rainy season would be something like 2 to 3 milliliters below ground level. All the watershed developmental activities when they are completed, the upland areas will have to have water table levels something like this. And in order to bring the water table levels from here to this one, a lot of recharge works will have to be carried out. And when once we carry out these recharge works, this is the result that has to come up in the upland areas of the watershed. Let us now see how these water table levels can be brought from here to this level in all the watershed upland areas. To understand that we will go to the next sketch. When the soil is in this type of uh, pattern, the spaces in between the soil particles is all saturated with water and this is the water table condition. In this case, the entire space is not saturated with water, but we have water as well as air pockets. Whereas in the other one, last case, there is no moisture at all in the space between the soil particles. It's all air. And this we are calling it as permanent wilt point. And this we are calling it as field capacity of holding the moisture within the soil. This we are calling it as saturated soil condition. That is the water table and below the water table the soil will be in this type. Above the water table the soil water and air would be of this type and when it is very dry the soil above water table will be of this type. Now let us discuss this aspect of soil moisture storage in a greater detail. Now in this condition we said the moisture is held under capillary suspension within the soil particles. In fact, the entire soil moisture would be something of this type or a lesser moisture than shown here. Actually, this type of soil moisture would be prevalent to a large extent during the rainy period. And when we say that the rainwater is held 
under capillary suspension, we mean that some portion of rainwater is held in the soil moisture domain and certain portion of rainwater goes down further and recharges the water table. And some portion of rainwater would result in runoff. That means it is overland flow, surface flow. Now we have got three types of flows out of the rains that occur in any land. One is the surface water flow, which we always call it as stream flow or flows in the lakes and things of uh, flows in streams and things like that. Now, the second type of moisture uh, um, availability is in the soil domain. That is, some portion of rainwater is held under capillary suspension as soil moisture in the unsaturated zone above the water table level. Some portion of rainwater goes further down to percolate further down and recharges the water table, recharges the groundwater. Now let us analyze what is the contribution of various types of availability of water and what is the amount of rainfall that goes to replenish these resources. Supposing the rainfall is 100 units of water in a particular area. Out of these 100 units in red soil area, it was studied in greater detail in Andhra Pradesh and it was found that nearly 20% of the rainfall on an average goes as surface water runoff and about 10% of rainfall goes as recharge to water table. The balance 70%, about 70% is held under capillary suspension within the soil, what we call it as soil moisture. And entire soil moisture disappears over a period of year in the shape of evaporation. For example, the soil moisture within the root zone of the crop would be taken away by the evapotranspiration requirement of the crop that is there on the soil. And when there are no crops, some soil moisture is taken by the trees that are there on the land. And when there are no further evapotranspirative requirements, it is just evaporation. That evaporation of soil moisture is more prevalent during the non-rainy period, especially during the summer. So the bulk of the soil moisture, which is nearly 70% of the rainfall in a given red soil area, is going away as evapotranspiration or as just mere evaporation. And this evaporation is quite significant during the months February to May, because that is the hot period in a year. And when this evaporation takes place, what is the net result? The soil will be rendered something like this. There won't be any moisture within the soil particles. The gaps are all filled with air only. And the condition available at this stage is not suitable for raising any crops, nor for supplying water to the trees that are there. In case the trees have to survive, the tap root of the tree would go down to water table in search of water table and it survives by taking water from the ground water. So that is the importance of the soil moisture in the whole four waters. In this sketch, a figurative or a representative sketch of ridges and valleys are shown. For example, this is the ridge of the watershed on one side and that means the ground level is sloping this side and the ground level is sloping this side and therefore this is one ridge of boundary of the watershed. And this is the exaggerated uh, cross section of the watershed and uh, this is another ridge boundary of the watershed 
this is sloping again like this. So therefore any rainfall occurring in between these two ridges, any rainfall occurring will find a way into the mainstream. Any rainfall occurring on this side of the ridge will not find a way into this stream but it will go away to some other place. Now in this watershed, this is the upland area or the higher ground and we can call this as the lower area and this again as the upper area. All the recharge works will have to be done in this upper area. Whatever uh, recharge which we discussed like mini percolation tanks or sunken gully pits or continuous contour trenches or recharging to open dried up dug wells and all that uh, type of engineering works will have to be done on the uh, recharge zone and uh, when we do that in the recharge area the water table which was at a lower level earlier will get heaved up or levels will increase and this would be the revised water table level. That means the water table level will come up in this manner shown here. Here also the water table level in the upland areas also it was originally like this and when it is, when it is like this before the watershed activities are taken up the water table level would come up like this due to various recharge works taken up in the upper areas. The same thing is shown in plan here. Supposing this is the stream and the flow of the stream is like this and this is the ridge line corresponding to this ridge and this is again the ridge line corresponding to this and this is a sort of a watershed and any rainfall occurring in this area will drain into this stream. Any rainfall occurring in this area will drain into this stream and the stream flows. So recharge works are all taken up here. That is the recharge area. Similarly recharge works are taken up in this area. And the discharge zone or the valley zone or the lower areas or these are the lower areas. So we generally don't take up any structured engineering works in the discharge prone areas because already the water table comes up to a, a very shallow depth and there is no need to take up recharge works in a discharge prone area. So all the works are concentrated in the upper areas.